Hey everyone, welcome back to Daily Devotions. Pastor Steve here walking with you in the scriptures, being able to dive deep into the disciple, now going to be the apostle. Andrew, I want you to open to John chapter 6. As I stated yesterday, uh, Andrew is not overly mentioned, but he's mentioned very subvertly every so often. And John chapter 6, he's mentioned here. Yesterday we spoke to um, how he... uh, brought the news to Jesus and Jesus. He was just kind of sitting at the feet of Jesus for an incredible teaching of Jesus in John chapter 12. Um, Mentioned 12 times in the scriptures, Andrew is, um, and he is a disciple. He is then going to be an apostle. Just a remembrance of that disciple is a follower of Jesus. An apostle is a sent one of Jesus. So he is going to be sent after the crucifixion and resurrection. um, And we'll get to see that tomorrow uh, when he is sent out and where he's sent out to and also dies a martyr's death. Um, He is a disciple apostle of Jesus. But within Jesus's ministry, we do see Andrew just ever so often. And in this John chapter 6, I think it's quite interesting. We have this first evangelist, Andrew, right? I mean, as the first called disciple, as a lot of people would say, of Andrew, uh, the one who went and got Peter to be able to say, hey, here's the Messiah, so that first evangelist, as we were saying, um, always kind of that in-between guy of being able to say, I've seen, I've heard, now I go and get, um, and being able to make sure that things have the opportunity to see Jesus, uh, people have this opportunity to see Jesus um, in his glory, um, in his miracles, in his teachings. And so that's what we get to see here in John chapter 6. Well-known, popular um, narrative, Jesus feeding the 5,000. So let's pick that up. John chapter 6, it says this, verse 1. Sometime after this, Jesus crossed the, to, the far, to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, that is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the miraculous signs he had performed on the sick. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover feast was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Eight months' wages would not buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Impossible. (laughs) Um, Why are we putting this on us? Why would you ask that question of where are we going to buy these people bread to eat? Right? Why, why are you putting that responsibility here? But that's not Andrew's take. That was Philip's take. Andrew's take is this. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five, five small barley loaves and two small fish, but how far will they go among so many? And so we get to see a little bit of the characteristics of Andrew, of being able to see the crowd being able to see Jesus and has been hearing Jesus and being able to think to himself, I can help. I can do something. So he finds this boy with five barley loaves and two fish and thinking, I, I don't know what could happen with this, but it's something. It's something. And Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and the men sat down, about 5,000 of them. Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, Gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves, left over by those who had eaten. After the people saw the miraculous sign that Jesus did, they began to say, Surely this is the prophet who was to come into the world. Jesus, knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew again to a mountain by himself. An incredible miracle. But I want you to focus in on Andrew. A lot of times we don't see him prevalent in this miracle. He did something. He maybe had this thought that well, if, if I just get something to Jesus, he can do everything with it. I want you to take that thought and that characteristic and that action of Andrew and think about you as a disciple. 
I know I can't do much in changing thousands and thousands of people's view or filling thousands and thousands, but I can do something. I can do something. Could I find a boy with five barley loaves and two fish and just place him at the feet of Jesus? Because that something can do something impossible with God. If I just bring something to God, just sit down in the grass, sit down in your chair, sit down in your house and just watch what God does with your something. He might do something miraculous. He might say that that's enough. I can work with that. Or he'll continue to say, keep searching and find more and challenge you. But the amazing thing about Andrew bringing that five barley loaves and two fish is that it continues to be in the narrative, right? Hey, disciples, I'm going to remind you again, after they've all had their, they've all uh, been fed, go and grab the pieces. Don't have anything to waste from those five barley loaves. It just keeps reminding of being able to say, from that little, from that provision of this little boy, the provision of God, but then all of a sudden the possibilities of God, the possibilities of the miracle. Go and gather. Don't, don't waste because out of this small amount, out of this offering that was what seemed like not enough, God brought enough. So go gather them, and each disciple has a basketful of bread. Now, I love this part of the story because out of what we think is not much, out of what we think is not going to be enough, God makes enough, but he even makes more than enough. His provision is always overflowing. Each disciple grabs a basket, and what is each disciple supposed to do? I believe, I know we don't get this in the narrative, but you're going to go to the neighborhoods. You're going to go, you have your own basket of provision. And as you go with that basket, as you go with the enoughness, I don't know if that's a word, but the enoughness of God, you're going to be able to witness and be able to tell and be able to just proclaim what you just saw. Why, why are you bringing this in? Why would you work that hard to bring in your own bread? Well, I'm telling you right now, it's not mine. It's something that God did with just a little bit and how he made it greater. For what? Just the overwhelming aspect of his majesty and his power. Jesus knew that they were overwhelmed. They were going to make him king. This is amazing. This is the sign that we're looking for, that you just can't do this. Out of five barley loaves and two fish, 5,000 men besides women and children are fed and, and uh, enough that they are satisfied, as it says in the other Gospels. But more than satisfied, overwhelmed. God's provision is always enough even if we don't think it starts with enough. And so I love what Andrew does. He doesn't just say, that's impossible. He goes and searches out what might seem impossible, but then he lays it before Jesus and sees the impossible become the possible. What little thing do you want to bring to Jesus? What little thing, little... Maybe frustration or uh, what little prayer do you bring to Jesus and then just sit down, place it before him and say, do your good work. I know nothing's impossible with you. What little offering, what little gift do you bring to Jesus and say, I don't know what you want to do with this, this time or this talent, this treasure, and, but you put it before, before Jesus, you trust him with it. And then you sit down and just say, do your good work. Hey, sometimes I feel insufficient. Sometimes I feel little, not enough. But just place yourself before Jesus and just say, do your good work. Do your good work. And in that day and in what I have of gifts, talents, and treasures and um, they're going to be enough for what God has in mind for his kingdom. Always. 
excuse me, always what seems impossible is possible with God. Put it at his feet. Thank you, Andrew, for showing us an example of doing something, taking some kind of action. Maybe it doesn't seem like enough, but God's grace, God's provision, God's possibilities are always enough. Have a blessed day putting whatever it is before Jesus and ask him, plead to him, pray to him, do your good work, and it will be enough. Have a blessed day.